This tutorial is for 5th grade, Module 1, Lesson 5. This lesson is a review of the decimal concepts that were covered in 4th grade. We're going to start by reviewing our decimal place value chart. Just as a reminder, I have one hole before the decimal point. As I move to the right on my place value chart, my one hole becomes one-tenth as great. So the first place value after the decimal point is the tenths place. We can also look at it in fraction form. So this place value shows me it is one-tenth of the whole. The hundredth place comes next and it reminds us that in this place a digit would be one one-hundredth of the whole. And the third place over is the thousandths place. And these digits are one one thousandth of the whole. So just as a reminder, as we move to the right of the decimal point, each unit becomes ten times smaller than the previous unit. We're going to keep that place value chart in mind as we write our decimals as numerals. Here we're giving the word form of the decimal, four thousandths, and we're asked to write it as a number. Now if you notice, I've highlighted the final place value word for each word form. That's our clue when we write our decimals. I know that my number has to end up in the thousandths place. So four thousandths means the four has to end up in the thousandths place which again is the third place to the right of the decimal point. Here I have 24 thousandths, so I know my 24 has to stop in the thousandths place. So you can see the 24 stops in the thousandths place, the third place to the right of the decimal point. The next example is 1 and 324 thousandths. The and is another clue. That is where my decimal point goes. So I see that I have one hole in my decimal point. Now I have 324. It needs to stop in the thousandths place. Since 324 is a three-digit number, I can see it lands in the thousandths place. The last question says 608 thousandths. So the number 608 needs to land in the thousandths place. So I have zero holes, 608, and again it lands in the thousandths place. So we use that last word in the word form to give us a clue on where the number should stop when we write it as a decimal. We can use the same sort of clue when writing a fraction as a decimal. Now the clue is looking at the denominator. Here I see that I have the fraction 46 thousandths, so I know the 46 has to end in the thousandths place of my decimal. So I have zero holes. I'll need to put a zero in the tenths place so that my 46 stops in the third place value, the, t the thousandths place. In the next problem, I have three holes, 946 thousandths. So here's my three holes before the decimal point. 946 is a three-digit number, so it stops in the thousandths place. And now I have 200 and 904 thousandths. My whole number goes before the decimal point, 904 thousandths lands in the thousandths spot. To express the decimal in word form, I just look at the number and think of if I just say this number as usual, but I the last word I say is the place value where it lands. So I would just read this number as five thousandths. So I can write that in words. Five thousandths. Here I have the number 11. The decimal point is where I say and. 
So it's 11 and 37, but it lands in the thousandth spot. So I'm going to say 37 thousandths. 11 and 37 thousandths. When I write a number in expanded form, I'm showing the value of each digit in the number. So I've written the number in the place value chart, and let's start with the 3. The 3 is in the tens place, so I know that the 3 is the same thing as 3 times 10. The 5 is in the ones place, so that's the same as 5 times 1. The 8 is in the tenths place, so when I look at this in fraction form, it's the same as 8 times 1 tenth. The 2 is in the hundredths place, so that's the same as 2 times 1 hundredth. And the 7 is in the thousandths place, the same as 7 times 1 thousandth. Now I can look at these fraction forms and change them into decimal form. My whole numbers th say the same. I can rewrite my 8 times 1 tenth as 8 times 1 tenth as a decimal form. 2 times the fraction 1 one hundredth can be written like this in decimal form. And 7 times the fraction 1 one thousandth looks like this in the decimal form. So basically the fraction form is just another representation of the decimal. So we can see how the two numbers are connected. And finally, we are given the expanded form of a decimal, and we are to write it in standard form. So I'll just start from the beginning. 7 times 10 is equal... I will start from the beginning. 7 times 10 means that I have 70. 4 times 1 means that I have 4. So I'll start with 74. Everything else will come after the decimal point. I have 6 times 1 tenth, which is 6 tenths, 9 times 1 hundredth, so I have a 9 in my hundredth spot, and 2 times 1 thousandth, so I have 2 in the thousandth spot. Here we're doing the same process, but they've given us the decimal form instead of the fraction form. Start with 5 times 1 hundred, so that would be 500, 3 times 10 is 30, I have, I do not have anything times 1, so I know that I'm going to have a 0 in my 1's place. Everything else will come after the decimal. 8 times 1 tenth means I have 8 tenths. And 9 times 1 thousandth is the next part of my number, which means I don't have any hundredths, but I do have 9 thousandths. So I look at each of these expressions. and I've worked them into my decimal. A good clue is to look for the, the plus signs. That helps you differentiate between the different digits in the number. So again, this lesson focused on the many representations of decimals, how we can read them, how we can write them, and what the place values represent.